And the other meaning for past tense is for us spiritual storytellers. It's about how we time travel and how we can go into the past, into the future, or stay in the present. We can play with timelines really easily in our storytelling. And putting something in the past tense is a really cool trick that we can all use if there's something that we no longer want to do or experience. Hello, spiritual storytellers, and welcome to Amalite Yourself, where we explore simple ways to blend spiritual practices and self-care so you can start telling a better story and empower yourself from the inside out, chakra by chakra. My name is Maria, and I'm a storytelling coach and the author of Closer to Indigo. And I coach spiritual storytellers to heal their past and create a brighter future using the magic of storytelling, crystals, and essential oils. And I'm so happy to be connecting with you across time and space. And if you'd like to book a personal service with me, the links are in the description box below. And so today I'd like to talk about self-care. Did you know that September is National Self-Care Awareness Month? It's a beautiful way to encourage us all to practice more self-care. And I'm really big on self-care. And I'm just curious, when I say self-care, what comes up for you? Is it going to the spa? Is it painting your nails a bright, vibrant color? Is it drinking some tea? Is it going outside in nature? Yeah, hearing the sounds of nature, going out on wellness walks. The beauty of self-care is you can do all kinds of different things. You can be as creative as you like. Just do something you like to do. And self-care is about nurturing yourself and giving yourself comfort. And it's a way of giving and receiving at the same time, which is wonderful. We all need to practice receiving. And uh, this is a good way to give yourself some love and to feel it and receive it back. Yeah, and uh, the bird <laughs> agrees. <laughs> And self-care, oddly enough, is also about what you don't do. Self-care is also about not doing things that are negative. Things like not hanging out with people who complain all day and drain your energy. Or watching TV shows that are a little creepy and make you feel icky and bring your energy down. Or watching the news and feeling bad about what's going on in the world without feeling like you're, you, there's something that you can do about it. And it's also about not putting toxins into your body. And it's also about not going into dangerous neighborhoods and risking your security and safety. And by neighborhoods, I mean metaphorically and literally. <laughs> These are all things that we don't have to do and we'll feel better for not having done them. And in my case, it's about not drinking alcohol so on August 28th, I celebrated my eighth so birthday. Yeah, I quit drinking eight years ago. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. And it's rooted in self-care. I care enough about myself to not drink alcohol. And I don't mean to be preachy. I don't expect everyone to go dry. 
But for me, not drinking wine every day, several glasses, and choosing other drinks like water or juice or tea, that's part of my self-care. It's part of my spiritual practice, and I'm sticking with it. And I thought about if I hadn't have stopped drinking, then where would I be now eight years later? I'm sure that alcohol would have shown up on my skin. It would have made it blotchy, probably wrinkles, deeper wrinkles, bags under my eyes. My hair probably would be thinner. I'd probably have dull eyes and my weight would be higher. Alcohol for me was affecting my relationships and my income, like spending, mm, I don't know, $2,000 a year on alcohol, which is money that I could have, could spend in other places. So with all those things in consideration, to me, not drinking alcohol is the better choice. And if this is something that you're considering, if you want to sober up and not drink anymore, and you'd like some support, then please reach out and book a call with me. I'd love to support you on your journey and share my wisdom of eight years on this sober path. And one thing that I could share with you right now is there are tools that you can use in your sobriety. The first is crystals. And the best crystal to use is amethyst. And see, I've got this amethyst bracelet. It's purple and it's connected to the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is all about healing, divine healing. And it's about spiritual healing. And so even if you were to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, they talk about surrendering to the divine in their serenity prayer. So giving up the alcohol to your higher power, however you understand this higher power, God, the universe, then nature, as long as this higher power is love-based, it's good. And let this higher power help you on your journey. So the amethyst is called the sobriety stone and it's biblical. And so if you'd like a gentle reminder about your sobriety, I invite you to have some amethyst on hand. So another tool that you can use for your self-care and or your sober path is aromatherapy and specifically having essential oils on hand that can help you feel better and comfort you, especially during the rough patches. And it just so happened that I received a bottle of past tense blend from doTERRA last week. And I hadn't planned it when I ordered it, but it was the perfect essential oil blend for me this past week. And it's the touch formulation. And I ordered it because I like the name, past tense. And it plays on different levels. Like on the one hand, it's got the word tense for tension. And it's about putting tension in the past so not feeling any more tension but feeling relief and being able to relax and the other meaning for past tense is for us spiritual storytellers it's about how we time travel and how we can go into the past into the future or stay in the present we can play with timelines really easily in our storytelling and putting something in the past tense is a really cool trick that we can all use if there's something that we no longer want to do or experience. 
And so this blend, on the one hand, helps us relax, and on the other hand, it helps us heal our past and put what we don't want in the past. And in my case, my drinking days are in the past. And so on this bottle, it's a touch formulation, and that means that it's got a roller bottle and you can apply it directly to the skin. And it's got a blend of many different essential oils, but the most prominent one for me is wintergreen. And so it's got a real minty aroma to it. And it's almost like a candy. It's very sweet and minty and uh, refreshing and cooling. And so they recommend that you put this blend on the back of your neck. So I went on a wellness walk and I put this blend on the back of my neck when I came home. And it was awesome. There's this cooling effect that came on really quickly, really unexpectedly. And it was, it was such a cool and refreshing thing to do after a wellness walk in the sun. And that sensation, that cooling sensation, lasted for a good hour. And it was a really nice distraction, I figured. Because, you know, do you ever have those thoughts and you can't seem to get them out of your mind and all you do is think about these thoughts and you don't want to, but they keep popping up well, if you use past tense and put it in the back of your neck, it'll distract you from those thoughts <laughs> and, uh, and feel good at the same time. And it's also when you put something in the back, in your back, it means the past. It means gone. So applying this essential oil blend to the back of the neck and taking away the tension. We carry a lot of tension in our shoulders and our neck and just letting it be and letting it go and surrendering it to the divine. Then we can relax and just move forward and tell a better story. So these are ideas that I've come across in my own experience that I thought I'd share with you. And if you're interested in learning more about self-care, particularly with crystals and essential oils and your chakras, then I invite you to come to my workshop. And it's all about the seven chakras. And I'm going to be giving a chakra healing constellation reading as well to the group. And we'll go chakra by chakra. And we'll see in real time which chakras are humming and which ones will need a little boost. And I also have a coaching program called Tune Up Your Chakras and where we focus on a chakra each week and that will allow us to really boost the quality of our life on an energetic level. It's really quite amazing. I've been focusing on my chakras all summer and I can honestly say that I feel so much better today.